let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and start this whole thing by talking about and reviewing some electrical terminology. Okay. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about some symbols. These handouts are available in your course. Um, and let me just make sure they are. Yeah, they're available in your course. The electrical terminology is available right right there. It's the it's student PPT electrical terminology. And the symbol wiring sheets we're going to be talking about, the symbols are all in the handout for electrical symbols. And there's a glossary of electrical terms there as well. Not all that worried about that right now. Let's concentrate on the symbols and what we're going to be doing with the symbols. If you are in the wrong course, by the way, if anybody's here for the oil course, you're in the wrong session, it starts at 1045. So again, if you're here for electrical for oil, you can either hang out and learn more about electrical, or you can take off and I'll see you at 1045. Okay, so electrical terminology is what we want to talk about. This is a basic electrical symbol sheet. This is common to all to all of electronics, all um, it's a standard language basic. Okay, I do expect you guys to know these symbols by the end of the course. Okay, We're, which is basically four weeks away. I expect you to know the symbols. The ones we're really worried about are at the, are sort of at the top up here. Okay, really concerned about. The single pole switch, the single pole double throw, double pole single throw, cooling thermostat we're worried about because that's what we're working on this term. I'm concerned about the pressure switches, the close on rise, open on rise. We don't know what all these do yet. We haven't talked about them, but we are going to be using them. I'm concerned about the time delay relay. That one's easy to remember. It looks like a hangman if you played the old game hangman. I'm worried about the relay contacts and the single phase compressor. Some of these other symbols here with the circles, I'm going to be giving you another symbol on that's being used more currently, so don't memorize that one and don't memorize those four, okay, because I'm going to be giving you some other symbols. Oh, and we do need to know the transformer and the relay. Okay, so those are the primary symbols I'm right now worried about. Um, because those are the ones we're going to be all addressing at the in the first portion of this course. So learn those symbols. Um, there's no good way to learn symbols other than memorization. It is what it is. Okay, so worry about the memorization on those. We're going to be talking about a lot of this stuff as it goes on. Okay, matter is anything that takes up space and has weight. Atoms. We talked a little bit about it yesterday when we started talking about electricity. It, it's what makes up all substances. All of this stuff should be reviewed. Most of you have had this before. Protons are part of positively charged particles in the nucleus of an atom. Electrons are negatively charged Okay, particles surrounding the nucleus. Conductors. Okay, only one or two electrons in the outer shell. Okay, they're easy to move. Okay, and conductors are things like the wires. Okay, copper is a great conductor. Silver is a great conductor. Gold is a better conductor, but it's expensive. So elect Conductors have only one or two electrons in the outer shell. They don't have a good bond, so it's very easy for the electrons to jump from one atom to another. Insulators. They have seven to eight electrons in the outer shell. They're harder to move. Insulators are things like rubber, glass, okay, dry wood. The electrons don't move too easily in those. Okay, plastic can be a good insulator. Electricity is very simple. It's the flow of electrons. Talked about that a little bit on uh, for those who I had on the call yesterday. But electrons can be forced out of their orbit by friction, by chemical activity, 
or magnetically. Okay, those are our three forms of how we produce power most often. We also have some, um, we have solar power, but that's photovoltaic. That's a different issue. But friction, think about it, petting, petting the cat backwards in a dark room, you see sparks. Okay, batteries is chemically. Okay, generator, I'm spinning a magnet in a spool of wire. Okay, that's chemically. Or, sorry, magnetically. Spinning a magnet in a spool of wire. That's how we produce most of our power. Okay, an electric circuit, and this is where we start getting into our core material. An electric circuit is a combination of parts that form a complete path through which electrons can move and be used. Okay, complete path. Line voltage is voltage that's supplied to the equipment from the power source. Okay, I gave this example yesterday, and I know there's more people on the call today, so I'll say it again. Your household outlets are line voltage. Okay, voltage that is supplied to the equipment from the power source. Okay, with respect to anything you plug in, the outlet's a power source. With respect to the outlet, the breaker panel is the power source. With respect to the um, breaker panel, the pole on the outside of the house is the power source. Okay, so there's a different power source, but line voltage, it's what's in your house, it's what's coming from the pole, line voltage. A load is a device that uses electricity to perform useful work. Okay, light bulb is a load. It's using electricity to light up a room. Okay, a motor is a load. It's using electricity to do something with the motor. Turn a belt, turn a fan, power a compressor, do something. Okay, so a load is something that uses electricity to do work. Then we have a control. Okay, a control is a device that allows you to open or close a circuit. Okay, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't perform work. All it does is it allows you to open or close a circuit. Light switch is a control. Okay, the mute button on a microphone is a control. It doesn't do anything work, but it prevents or allows work to be done. Now, this is something extremely critical, okay, that I need everybody on the call to understand. A closed circuit is a complete path for electrons to flow. Okay, so if you have a switch, it's the exact opposite of a water valve. If we have a switch that's open, there's no path for electrons to flow. You see the gap in here? Okay, so if, there, if it's an open switch, there's a gap. It's totally opposite from an open water valve. Okay, if I, have a, if I close that switch, okay, if I close that switch, I now have a closed path, okay? So again, this allows my electrons to flow straight through. But an open switch has no path for electrons to flow. A closed switch allows power to flow. That's my big difference, okay? Open circuit, no complete path. Closed circuit has a complete path for electrons to flow. An open circuit okay, is a broken path like I was just talking about. Open circuit is a broken path. Okay, so totally opposite from a water valve. We have three parts of a circuit. I have line, I have load, I have a control, 
and I have wiring, parts of a circuit, line, load, control, and path. Okay, if any one of these parts of a circuit is missing, the circuit won't work. Line, load, control, and path. Any one of these paths missing, the circuit will not work. Okay, does anybody have any questions up to this point? Okay, any questions? Okay, Jermaine, you mentioned something in a chat. Are you able to hear me properly? Yes, I hear you now. I feel okay. it. Okay, thank you. Mm. Okay, so, so path, okay, so if I draw a basic circuit out here, I have an L and a neutral, okay? That's my, this is my two prongs of the 120-volt outlet. Okay, I have a light bulb down here that I want to power, okay? Forgive my relatively bad drawings. They're sometimes tough with a mouse. Okay, so I have my wire, okay, coming out of my line. I go to a switch, and I go to my light bulb. I come out of my light bulb, and I go back to neutral. The way I have this circuit drawn, is that light bulb going to be on or off? Oh. oh. Why? Uh. It is not complete. Because the yeah, switch is open. Yeah, I have open. an open switch. I don't have a complete path. Yeah. So if this is a 120 volt circuit, okay, I don't have current coming through here, so that light bulb has zero voltage. Now, if I close this switch, okay, is that light bulb going to be on or off? Mm. On. Mm. on. Okay. So, let's do the, let's look at this, okay, because this is actually a very important point. So, if I have an open switch, and I have line on this side, which is 120 volts, and I have neutral on the right side, which is zero volt. If I put a voltmeter, and it, again, for those of you just joining the court, just joining the program, I'll spend a lot more time on this. But if I put a voltmeter, which measures the potential to do work across that switch, one hundred twenty. Okay, what am I going to read on that meter? 120. Yeah, the difference, 120. My meter is reading the potential to do work. Okay, so voltage across an open switch will always be source. That is our first rule of using a meter. Voltage yeah, across it. an open switch will always be source. Any questions on that? You said it reads the potential? Yeah, your meter reads the potential to do work. Uh, okay, I so I have a potential. I have a potential. Yeah, if you would close that, if you would close that, it would be 120. Yeah. It would, no, there would be no be 120 zero. here because I now have 120 on both sides of the switch. Mm -hmm. So the difference, which is the potential, here is zero when the switch is closed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's how hey. I do it. Uh, it's, it's a difference. Yeah, Does that make, difference, right? make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it makes more sense in my mind if I just remember it as, like, it, it reads a difference. Yeah, okay, yeah, difference, potential, however you want to look at like, that. I'm fine with voltage or whatever. Can, can you do it one more time for that? Okay. I'm going to draw it down here because I have a tough time erasing everything without erasing all my scribbles. Okay. 
If I have 120 volts here, <laughs> okay, and zero volts there because the switch is open, yeah. I put my two meter leads on here. Okay, those are two meter leads. Okay, I have 120 here, I have zero here. My meter is going to read the difference or the potential, however you want to word it. Okay, and it's going to display 120. That's an yeah. open switch. If I close the switch, I now have 120 here, so I don't have any difference or potential. It's going to read zero. Okay. Make sense? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. So, again, voltage across an open switch is source. Whatever source is, don't get in a habit of saying 120 because it might not be. Voltage across a closed switch is zero. We need a uh, pump and we need close uh, both times the multimeter shows like the zero. What was that? Say that again. I'm saying as a, when you say like as a, when the switch was open, it said, uh, it indicates the zero, and when the switch was closed, also it indicates the zero? No, when the switch is no. open, it's going to be whatever source is. So if it's plugged into an outlet in your house, it's 120. If it's on an air conditioner, it might be 240, 480, or whatever your voltage is. Oh, okay. Okay, please do me a favor, everybody. Mute yourselves unless you're asking me a question. I'd really appreciate because I'm having a tough time hearing the question. So again, so voltage across a switch, if it's open, in other words, if the switch is turned off, you're going to read whatever source is. If the switch is turned on, you're going to read zero on a meter. Okay, and I do have a chat box open. If anyone needs to ask a question and doesn't want to ask it, I will answer it in chats. But so voltage is electrical pressure that causes electrons to flow. Okay, a lot of times you'll hear voltage refer to as electromotive force, EMF, voltage. It's the pressure that causes the electrons to flow. Millivolt is 0 0.001 volts. Kilovolt is 1,000 volts. Don't really want to work with kilovolts in this trade. That's more the power company's problem. Current is the amount of electrons flowing in electrical circuit, the speed of the electrons flowing. Milliamp, 0.001 amps, microamps goes down further. Okay, we don't deal that much with milliamps and microamps. You might come across milliamp readings when you're doing gas heat. Okay, some of the ignition controls might work on milliamps, but I'm not worried about that. Okay, we're worried about, we can probably be talking, um, we're more in the one amp stage for control circuits, and we're talking up to 50 amps on most of our compressors. Okay, so we're not talking a ton of amperage, okay, in terms of milliamps. We're not talking very small quantities. Resistance is the opposition to flow of electrons in an electrical circuit. Okay, so in my circuit here that I drew out earlier, okay, and again, really bad drawing of a switch. Sorry about that. There's my light bulb. And then we go back to neutral. Okay. This is a switch. Okay, so right now, What's the resistance on that switch? Is it zero or is it infinity or your meter would show open OL for open load? That switch as drawn, what's the resistance? Is it zero? Does it have no resistance to the flow of electricity? Or is it infinite? It has a lot of resistance. Oh, I say a lot. Open You're right. An open switch has infinite resistance. So if I disconnect the power from this circuit, and again, everybody hear me, if I disconnect power from the circuit to use my ohm meter, and if I take an ohm reading from there 
to there across this switch. Okay, an open switch is always going to show on your meter as OL. OL just stands for open line, open, line. open load, or infinite. Okay, open switch is going to show OL for open load. Now, if I turn around and have a switch that I've closed, okay, I have a closed switch now. And if I put a meter from here to here, what's going to be my resistance on my meter? Zero. Zero. There's no resistance to electrical flow. Okay, so back to our rules of switches. If I have an open switch, I have infinite resistance, or OL. If I have a closed switch, my resistance is going to be zero. Okay, very important point of troubleshooting and using your meters as we start to use meters and talk more about it. Resistance across an open switch is always OL or infinite. Your meters will display OL. Your resistance across a closed switch is always zero if the switch is good. Now, having said that, think about a light bulb. Okay, that's a light bulb. Little squirrel inside and a circle around it as close as I get to a circuit. So if I take a resistance across a light bulb, I'm holding in my hand. A light bulb is a load. Okay, all loads have resistance because they're going to do something with the power. They're going to do work. All loads have resistance to one form or another. Okay, so the coil of wire, the filament in a light bulb has resistance. Okay, so if I have a load light bulb I'm holding in my hand and let's just say it is 15 ohms or let's just say one ohm of resistance just for because I already drew the one one ohm of resistance okay that's what I'm measuring on my meter now let's go say I shake the light bulb hard enough where the filament breaks okay so now I have a broken circuit what will the meter show instead of one ohm? Open line. OL. OL. Open line. Whoever said it, that's right. So a load that's open will act the same way as an open switch. The same thing if you have a motor with a broken winding, too. Say any load that has a broken winding in it or broken wire going through the load. It's going to show OL. Yes, you're right. The same thing. Okay, so again, both the resistance across an open switch is OL. The resistance across a closed switch is zero. The resistance across an operational, that means a load that will work, is some number. It's not going to be just one ohm. It might be 10 ohms. It might be 100 ohms. Okay, it might be any other number in here. Okay, the resistance across that working load is going to be some number. But the minute you have an open winding or an open wire in that load, in other words, the electrical circuit is broken, that resistance becomes the equivalent of an open switch. Any questions on that? Pretty simple, straightforward. Okay, just again, I want to, let's just, we want to level set and make sure everyone's in the same place as we move on. Electrical power, which is known as watts, is the rate at which electricity is being used. Okay, or the rate at which electrons perform useful work. There are two numbers that I really want you guys to know because it's going to come into play as we go further on down the road in air conditioning. One watt 
is 3.41 BTUs per hour. Okay? One watt gives off 3.41 BTUs of heat per hour. Okay? One horsepower is 746 watts. Why do I care about these numbers? Easy. Okay? Everything we're doing is talking about moving heat from one location to another. In air conditioning, I want to move out of the building and put it in the outside environment where I really don't care what it does. Horsepower is everything having to do with motors. Okay? We need to be able to figure out, based on the horsepower of a motor, how many amps and voltages we are using. We need to figure out how much work it's going to have. Okay, so horsepower is extremely important when it comes to motors and compressors. 1,000 watts per hour is one kilowatt. That's what your power company bills you on. Okay, kilowatts used. Okay, yesterday I mentioned lockout tagout. Okay, lockout tagout prevents the power source from being turned on. You're going to deal with much more of this when you're in the shops. Okay, just make sure no one can turn the power source on you. It's a sort of a self-protection. Is there any questions on this basic stuff that I just went over? Oh, someone just asked, what's a BTU? BTU is a measurement of heat. It's called a British thermal unit. Okay, one BTU raises the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. Okay, so one BTU raises the temperature one pound of water, one degree Fahrenheit. Okay, so 3.41 BTUs would raise the temperature of one pound of water, 3.41 degrees in one hour. Okay, so that's what a BTU is. Okay, so Let's take a look at, um, basic, uh, at a basic electrical circuit, okay? So I want to go ahead, I'm going to pull something over here, and I'll make this available to you after we talk about it, okay? We want to take a look at a basic electrical circuit, okay? So what we're doing is it's asking us to draw one load, controlled by a single pole, single throw switch. Okay, we have to start off with our source. Without our source, we don't have anything. So let's just start off by, I always start off line and neutral. Okay, it's not telling me anything else, but we're going to start off with that. Then, I'm going to draw my, I'm going to draw my switch in. We know we have a switch. Okay, so I'm going to draw my switch in. And by the way, I'm doing this in PDF Expert, so um, it's the same thing you have. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and draw my light bulb in. Get the component. Oops, that won't do the light bulb. Get the components on your paper first, then connect them. Okay, so I have a light bulb. So now I have to give the path, okay, because if I don't put a path in, it's missing part of the circuit. So let me just, uh, we're going to put a path in. Okay, and I just use the different colors, just it's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Okay. So we have our single pole circuit. I have one light bulb controlled by a single pole switch. Basic circuit. We just are missing one thing on this diagram. Who can tell me what I'm missing? Labels. Labels. Make it easy for yourself. SW and B1 or something. I mean, again, with a simple circuit like this, it doesn't matter, but as we start getting more complex circuits, labels. 
Okay, how much voltage are we using? Might as well label that too while we're at it since it really needs to be shown someplace. Again, with L and neutral, it's relatively obvious. I, I mean, it's 120 volts. But if I change this like to L1 um, or L2, I need to start knowing how much voltage I'm using. Okay, that's a complete schematic diagram. I have the symbol for my switch. I have a circle for a light bulb. I'm fine with that. Okay, now, is this switch open or closed? Open. It's open. open. It's an open switch. Okay, so if I look down at what it's at, what it's asking me, let's look at the theoretical first. Okay, if my switch is in the open position, and if I put a meter from L to L, what's the voltage that I'm going to get? 120. I'm mm -hmm. going to get 120. Yeah, this is going to be my 120. Okay, because it's voltage across the source. If I don't get 120 mm -hmm. at the source, what do I need to do? Hey, um, okay, if I don't get 120 at the source, what do I need to do? Figure out why it's doing that. It's yeah, like a you don't have 120 at the source, you might as well not go any further in the circuit because you have a problem to start with. Yep. Okay, Juan, you put a message in the in the chat. If you are asked at the bottom, to, and if you're asked either call or Wi-Fi, I want you to choose Wi-Fi. Okay, so that's that's our first thing. Now, if we take a voltage reading, okay, if I take a voltage reading across this, oops, let's turn that over. If I take a voltage reading from there to there, what am I going to oh, get? Well. Voltage reading. Zero. Oh, zero. Or well, 120. Voltage yep, voltage across an open switch is going to be source. Because there's no potential difference. Yep. Well, there there is because neutral is basically neutral is basically zero volts, right? Mm -hmm. So neutral is coming all the way Around back it. to this side of the switch. Yeah. Okay, line which is my one twenty is coming to the left side of the switch. So between line side and neutral side. I now have a difference of potential of 120. That's what my meter's showing me. Okay, if I take another, if I take a voltage reading and go from the load side of the switch, again, load side of the switch, which is the right side of the switch, it's towards the load, mm -hmm. and the line side of B1, from here to here. Okay, in other words, from here, from here to here, the circuit as is, what's my voltage okay. reading? Zero. Zero. Why? Why? Because there's no, there's no, there's no source. Because it's like an open socket. Yeah, there's, there's no, no source. continuance of the... Yeah, yeah there's no source. Because you're, yeah, you're all both on the zero side of the switch. And the source okay, is cut off that switch because it's open. Yeah, you're, at, you're after an open switch. There's no difference of potential. What if I go from here from across this load, across the light bulb, with it the way it is, with the circuit the way it is, what's going to be my voltage? Zero. Still zero. Again, I'm on the same side of an open switch. It's going to be zero. Mm -hmm. What if I go from... Oops. Let me... 
What if I go from here to there? Sus. Still zero. Still zero. Yeah, it's still zero. Again, same side of open switch. Now, let's change this up a little bit. Let's close this switch. Let me get rid of a whole bunch of my arrows to start making this a little bit easier. Okay, I take a voltage degree cross line and neutral. What should it be? 120. Zero. 120. Zero. Who, what? I heard a couple different answers here. Doesn't it read? Um, what was that? It's going to. You gonna still read have a difference. Right? You still, it's my source. It's going to be 120. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Source is still going to be 120. If I take a voltage reading from line from this arrow here to this point here, what's my voltage going to be? 120. Wait a sec. I have, I have line here, which is 120. I'm coming down here. I'm coming through here. Okay, so I'm bringing line all the way through here to my load. These two arrows, this and this, is on the same side of the load. Is there a difference in potential? No. No, I think it's the same. So it's zero. You're on the same oh. side of a load. Switch is closed. Zero. Okay, now, what if I change and go from there to there? It will be zero. What's my, vol what's my voltage? Zero. It'd be zero. There's no There's on the same side of the load. I'm on the same side of the load. How about from there to there? 120. 120, which brings me to my third rule of an electric circuit. The voltage across a working load is always source. The voltage across a working load is always source. Now, having said that, what happens if this light bulb is burned out? What's my voltage? It's zero. zero. Someone said 120 in the background. Why? Because Hey guys, I, someone has a lot of feedback. I can't quite hear what people are saying. Um, the voltage across on an open load is like an open switch. It's source. So when you're troubleshooting, how do you tell if you get a, if I get 120 volts across the light bulb? How do you tell if the load is working or not working? Because voltage across a working load is source, and voltage across a non-working load is source. How do I tell if the load is working? Again, voltage across a non-working load is source. Voltage oh, you got to go on the same load. side. Oh, man, see if the load's working. Just look at it. A voltage across a working load is source. Voltage across a non-working load is source. 
you're going to be able to tell by looking at it and feeling it whether or not the load is working. Is the light bulb powered or is it producing light or isn't it? Is the motor turning or isn't? Right. Okay, all you're doing by checking voltage across a non-working load is saying, does it have power? Is there anything wrong in the lines before it? Is power getting to it? But the voltage across a working load is source. The voltage across a non-working load is source. The big difference is the, the light bulb is producing light or the motor's turning or it's not. Okay, because a non-working light bulb has an open wire in it. A non-working motor has an open wire in it. Any questions on that? What if there's a problem with the load? Like, say, it doesn't work. Well, why doesn't it, why wouldn't it work? Okay, it has an open like, wire, right? If it's a faulty part or something. Depends on what it is. So, example, if it's a motor and if it has a bad bearing, you might have voltage on it, but it's, we haven't talked about current yet. We haven't talked about taking amperage readings yet. It's going to have a very high amperage because it's trying to turn but not turning. If it has a bad wire in it, okay, can I separate this load from the rest of the circuit? Okay, can I pull that load out of the circuit? and take a resistance reading across it and identify that as a bad wire? Because if it's a bad load, what's the resistance reading going to be? Oh, well. Oh, well. Easiest way to tell. So when you find a load that's not working in a circuit, and if it has voltage, you can pull that load out of the circuit like take the light bulb out of the socket, and you can measure the resistance, and you're going to get whether or not it's a good or bad load. Cool. Thanks. Okay, now again, you can have mechanical failures, okay, if that's the direction you're going. You can have mechanical failures. But nine out of ten times, you're going to see an electrical failure. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Really quick, can you explain the difference for me one second? The difference in the in which which part? Like uh, what it is exactly? It's in, just uh, uh, as I just went over, or with specific uh, yeah. to the open or closed. Just okay. real quick. So, so the difference okay. is, um, yeah. If I take a voltage reading here and I get 120 volts, okay, because the voltage across a working light bulb, is this light bulb is working, is going to be whatever source is, okay? Then if this light bulb burns out, okay, so the filament burns out in the center of it, or somebody, well, someone drops it, it's going to be relatively obvious. But let's say the filament is busted in the middle of that light bulb. It's now acting as an open switch because it's, open, it's a path that's open. So neutral's coming down here at zero, 120 is coming through here. So the voltage across this open load is going to still be 120. With me so far? Source load. Yes. So the difference between a working and a non-working load is just that one with voltage is that the load is the light bulb isn't on or the motor isn't running now if i pull this light bulb out of the circuit okay and if i pull put an ohm meter on it to measure resistance if the resistance Okay, measures OL. Okay, it's telling me that there's an open winding or some open wiring in this circuit, in that part. If the resistance measures some number, the part is good, but your connections are bad. Okay, because the, vol the resistance across an open load will be in infinite, or OL. The resistance across a working load 
is going to be some number. With me? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Now, what happens... Let me throw this load back in the circuit where it belongs, since I'm done playing with it over there. Okay. What happens... If I close, if my close switch, close the switch, and all of a sudden I get zero volts from there to there, what's it telling me? Something wrong on the outside, on uh, the beginning of it. <laughs> yeah, if I had, if I had 120 volts here, Oops, let me get back to my arrow. If I had a 120 volts between here and here, and then I came down here and closed the switch, and all of a sudden getting zero volts... You blew something. Okay. Or something. Need to figure out why my readings all of a sudden went to zero volts, okay? Need to come back and measure source. And if I have source up here with a closed switch and getting zero volts here, either that wire... Or that wire's bad, or my mm -hmm. switch is bad. If all of a sudden I come back up here after closing the switch and get zero volts up here, oops, zero volts up at the top, if that all of a sudden now I go back and check it and it's zero, there's something wrong with this circuit down here. Mm -hmm. Now, let me throw a resistance example at you. Let's get rid of those. Okay, I disconnect the circuit from the power. And again, you keep hearing me say this, so I'm trying to get a point across. I disconnect the circuit from the power before I use any resistance, before I use the ohm meter. Okay, cannot have a circuit connected with the ohm meter. Okay, if I get a resistance of OL here, what am I going to check next? No worry. I'm going to leave that meter probe where it's at, the left, the left meter probe. I'm going to leave it where it's at. Okay? And I'm going to jump through the circuit to every connection. Okay, between here and here, my meter's showing zero. What's it telling me about that wire? The wire is good. That is the good. The wire's good, right? Mm. Okay. What if I'm going from there to there and it's tell and I and it's giving me zero? What's that now telling me? The That's good. Is good. The switch, switch is, is good. good, right? Yeah. Okay. Go. Go from here to there. And I get zero. What's it telling me? That's good. Everything's good. Everything's good. Go from there to there. Really and I get OL. What's it telling me? The load is bad. The load's bad. Load's bad. Okay, what if I get eight? What's it telling me? There's a lot of resistance. My load's good. Load of a good load is some number, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what if I go from... I'm still leaving. Notice I'm still leaving my left meter probe where, where it is. So I'm back to there, and all of a sudden I'm getting OL again. What's it telling me? It's not good. What's not good? What part of the circuit? The load. The load. The load. No, What's because the load? the load we just measured out, it was eight. It was good. Oh. Let's just back out to the load. Load. The wire? The, this this the last the wire right here is yeah. bad. Mm -hmm. You see how I went through that circuit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've one lead. 
where it is and walk all the way through the circuit. Now, what if I went from here to here and had zero? Everything's good. Wait a sec. What must every circuit have? Of course, 120. Well, no, we're talking resistance, so 120 isn't here. What are my required I mean, parts of every circuit? The load. I have to have a path. Path is zero ohms. That's fine. But what can you tell me you about load. any load? This is still alive. Uh, yeah. This should have a uh, resistance. A load should have resistance. Every load is going to have resistance. Are you in the habit of signing things without... Okay, so every load has resistance. So if I have zero resistance across an entire circuit, what is that telling me about that circuit? There's a word for this. There's a, word, there's a name for this circuit. If I have zero resistance across an entire circuit... What type of circuit is that? It's a short circuit. Zero resistance across an entire circuit is a short circuit. It's going to blow a breaker. And again, please mute yourselves, guys, if you're not asking me a question. I'd really appreciate if someone's unmuted and has background noise. Okay. Say that again. If I have zero resistance, across an entire circuit. It's a short circuit. Okay? Because there's no load and no resistance to control the flow of power. So the amperage in this circuit is going to continue to speed up and speed up and speed up until the breaker blows. The load... Did you did what? I did that by accident yesterday. Yeah, that's a bad thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so the load is going to the load is what provides my resistance. So any time I have an entire circuit with zero ohms, I have a short circuit. Figure out where the problem is. Sometimes it's in a load. So if I pull this load out of the circuit, okay, and if I take my resistance reading across that load. Okay, and if I have zero ohms, what's it telling me about that load? Wait, it's there you go. Bad. If I pull the load out of a circuit and take a resistance reading of the load and get zero ohms, what's it telling me about the load? Yeah. It's shot. Yeah, it's shot. It's a shorted load. Are you going to take it apart in the field and try to fix it? No. 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 You're going to go to the supply house and get another what it, whatever it is, the twisty dewy thingamajig. You're just going to go get another one. Okay? Because you can't fix a shorted load. Now, if you find a short circuit, is like our overall circuit, okay, are you going to hopscotch through it and find where the, shorted where the short part of the circuit is? Yes, you are. Nine out of ten times blame it on the electrician. Okay, so that's a series circuit with one load. Okay, let's see if we can put this in to a simula sort of a simulated environment real quick here. If the world cooperates. Okay. I have my electric power simulator here. By the way, this is on the Simutech server that you guys all have access to. Okay. We drag in our, we're just going to use a battery. We drag in our source because every circuit has to have a, ah, we'll even put it as we did in the schematic. Every circuit has to have a source, source path switch and load. I'm going to drag in my switch. And let's throw our load in here as well. Let's click on the click on the battery and I'm gonna up this voltage from a nine volt battery. Yeah, we're gonna use a we're gonna use a hefty hundred volt battery. 
like you can find one of those any place other than a simulator. We're missing our wiring. We got to connect our wiring. Okay, so I'm going to make this neat. Okay, we're going to connect our wiring. When you drag it close, it connects. Okay, I'm going to bring my other wiring in here to the switch. Connect the light bulb. 90 degree angles, boy. Going to come out of here. There's something to be said about trying to work neat when you're starting to work with any type of electrical diagrams. So I have my source switch, I have my path, and I have my load. Okay, I put a meter on here. By the way, by clicking on the voltmeter check mark over here. I drag and drop my two leads on each side of that battery. Is my source good? Anybody? Is my source good? It's good. Yeah, I have 100 volts on the meter. I'm fine. Source is good. Mm -hmm. Come down here to the line side of my switch. That's the side of the switch towards the battery. Okay. Is my is the wire from here to here good? Is the wire yeah. from the yeah. battery to the switch good? Yep. Yeah, I don't have a difference in potential. Go to the load side of the switch. Even though you can see it, what's that telling me about the switch? It's off. Is it on or off? It's off. It's open. It's open. Voltage across an open switch is source. Go to the line side of my light bulb. What's it telling me about the circuit? Still open? Still an open circuit. Yep. What's it telling me about the circuit on the on the neutral side of the bulb? It's open. It's an open circuit. All that all, everything after the switch is telling me that there's an open switch. Now let's come back to the switch. Close the switch. Voltage across a closed switch should be what? It should be um, zero. zero. Yeah, well, 0.007, I'll accept close enough to zero. Something, There's probably something a little resistance zero. in that switch. I'm fine on that. Yeah. You almost okay. get like zero. What if I go to there? What's it telling me about the circuit? Even if I couldn't see the light bulb. A little resistance. A little resistance. Zero. Close. If the switch is closed, and yes, whoever whoever said there is a little resistance, there is a little resistance in this circuit. Okay? What about if I go from there? What you're telling me about the circuit? Why am I getting 100 volts? Hey, guys, there's a ton of background noise, please. What's it telling me about the circuit? It's closed. And the bulb is working beautifully. Getting 100, voltage. Hundred B. Yeah, voltage is. I'm getting a hundred volts across that load. Voltage yeah. across a working load. Okay. Turn the switch off. Okay. No voltage. Okay, but voltage across an open switch is it's source. source. Yeah. Okay, so if I come down from here to here, voltage across a non-working load is what? Zero. Zero. If I oh, well. close my, if I close my, the resistance across a non-working load is OL. 
You should actually get a number for voltage. Okay. Okay, voltage across a working load is pretty close to... Right. Source. Yeah, source, yeah. Okay. This is a basic series circuit. Okay, there, when we talk series circuit, there's one path for electricity to flow. Okay, there's no multiple path. There's one path for electricity to flow. Series circuit. Okay. Series circuit is what's used most often in the HVAC trade for single loads or for controls. Okay, so if I want, if I took that switch, and it's tough to redo things here, so we're just going to get rid of this meter here for a moment. If I added another switch, in other words, I wanted to have a switch at the top of the stairs and at the bottom of the stairs, or let's say a safety, okay, so a safety control, okay, and if I took that second switch, which could be a safety control, I have my main operating control, I turn it on, but that safety's open. There's no second path for that electricity to flow. Okay, so both switches have to be closed for the light bulb to come on. Make sense? We're going to use this a lot. Okay, we're going to use this a lot when we talk about our control circuit. Okay, the switch, both switches, all the safeties have to be closed for the light bulb to come on or for the compressor to turn on or for whatever to energize. Everything has to be closed because the switches are wired in series. Now, what if I wired Eh, let's move this stuff around a little bit. If I took this and I put those switches next to each other, Yeah, it helps if I get that. Put these switches next to each other. Do both switches have to be closed for this light bulb to come on? No. 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 If I close this switch, the light bulb is going to come on. If I close this switch, the light bulb is going to come on. These switches are considered to be wired in parallel. They're next to each other. That's the difference between series and parallel. There's more than one path when we're talking parallel. When we're talking series, there's only one path. Okay? So a series circuit only has one path. And again, this is something you guys do need to know. A parallel circuit has two paths. We can do this with loads, too. Say that again. A series circuit has a single path. You see how this is a series circuit? Okay. One yeah, path yeah. for electricity to flow. A parallel circuit, okay, has two paths for electricity to flow. So if I close this switch, it will flow, or if I close this switch, it will flow. You see the difference? Yeah. Okay. So a series circuit has a single path for electricity to flow. Now, we'll take this a step further. And this, we're going to talk much more about this tomorrow, but just to introduce this, 
We take this as a step further. <coughs> and I toss a light bulb in here. Ah, let's keep my switch. Forgot about that. My name is this. Okay. Are those pe light bulbs in series or parallel? Series. 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 There's a single path for electricity to flow. Now remember, the last time we did this, what was the voltage we got across the light bulb? 100. Yeah, close, close to 100 volts, right? Yeah. Yeah, source. Now, sorry about the big line, the yellow all over the place. I haven't figured out how to kill that yet. So now... Oh, well, that's nice, though. <laughs> now, if I throw the meter on across that light bulb, I'm only getting close to 50 volts. Why? Because it's good. Because it needs a, it's 100 volts per, for the whole circuit, so you need 50-50. So it's kind of shady, like 50-50? Yeah, because there's only one path, and each bulb uses electricity. Yep. Okay, to do work. So it's going to split it. So if I take my voltage reading across both bulbs, I'm going to get close to 100 volts. Okay. If yeah. I just take my voltage reading across one bulb, I'm going to split it. Does it always split equally? No. You're right. No. So if I change the resistance of the bulb, let's add resistance here. Okay, see what happened to the voltage that one bulb is using? Yeah. Went up to the, like 73 volts. Okay, still have 100 volts in the circuit, but now this bulb is getting more then this bulb is, which is only getting 27. So the resistance in a series circuit used by the bulb is based on the re is based the voltage used in a circuit based on the bulb is based on the resistance. Again, we're going to talk much more about this tomorrow. But does everybody understand what I sort of have put out here so far? Yeah, so if you add the resistance, then uh, the voltage is going to be high, right? Say that again. If you add the resistance, then the voltage is going to be high, right? As I, as I raise the resistance of a bulb, okay, the resistance of a bulb goes up. It's going to use more voltage. Okay. Okay, it's called voltage drop is the official term to it. The voltage drop of a higher resistance load is greater. Okay, because I'm dropping 75 volts here, I'm only dropping 23 or whatever, 27 here. But no matter what, the total voltage of the series circuit is still going to add up to source. Now, Let's change this up a little bit. Yeah, it's just easier to do that. Okay. Let's toss Okay, another bulb in here. Okay, I now have two paths for electricity to flow. You see it? I have one bulb at the top coming out of the switch and going back. It's all connecting back to neutral, basically, because that's just a single point. I have another bulb coming out of the switch down here. See if I can neaten that up a little bit. Okay, so I now have two paths for electricity to flow. Close the switch. Okay, first of all, my amp... 
Oops. My amperage is way high, right? Yeah. See what I'm doing to that switch? So let's let's um we're gonna increase some resistances here. Because I really don't want to burn everything down. <laughs> My fire went away. What was that? Yeah. My fire went away now. Okay, so if I take my meter, just without me taking my meter, if I put the meter across this switch, what am I going to get? A hunter. Source. Should get source. Okay, if I take my meter across this bottom bulb, from there to the there. Source. It's all going to be source. All the way from the source. Okay, if I take my meter... And put it across the top bulb. What am I getting? The from the source. Yeah, because all the loads, even though it's coming out of the switch, all the loads are getting full source voltage. Mm -hmm. This is considered a parallel circuit. Parallel circuits, all the loads get full source voltage. Which which one do we more often use in HVAC, if you had to guess? Which circuit do we use more often? Series. Parallel. What if I oh, said both? Series parallel. Series what parallel. If I said, what if I said both for different purposes? Mm. That, that yeah. makes more sense. Makes sense. It depends. For control circuits, for things that we use to control yeah. loads, That's I parallel. use series. Series, yeah, one, one way. The controls are in series. For loads, like compressor, span, bulbs, um, anything terrible. that does work, with one exception, I use parallel. Because you don't want it to be split in voltage, right? Yeah, I don't want it to drop voltage. But your controls, you want it to be like, if if the control goes out, it needs to be in series so it takes everything else out, right? That is absolutely correct. For series, for control circuits, I don't want to have buddy. multiple options. Thanks. Okay, that is series parallel. We're going to, again, we're going to talk much more about this tomorrow because I, have a buddy, I do need to go over some stuff tomorrow with this. But does everybody understand the basics? Yes. yes. Very knowledgeable, okay. man. Okay, this simulator is available out there if you log in using the RDP desktop that I had you to do. This simulator is available for you guys to use. When you're using it, what? The desktop thing you asked us to download, I tried downloading it. I just confused altogether how to get into it. And did, you watch, did you watch the video I put out there on it? I did not. Okay, if you, look at, if you look at the announcements at the top of your course, there's yeah. a video out there in one of those announcements that I actually did a video of it for you guys. Okay. Go to your Apple Store and then... Uh, Apple Store, you don't got a computer. Okay. But the, the AC Circuit Construction Simulator is out there. Mess around with it, okay, <laughs> because I'm going to have you guys be using that. Now, here's something very important. So if everybody can mute yourself real quick so I can tell you something ready. very important on this. Okay, when you are in here in this circuit simulator on your iPad and you are trying to drag wires and stuff around, okay, put three fingers on your screen to drag, okay? When you want to drag something on your iPad, three fingers on your screen lets you drag it. If you just use a single finger, it will not drag. Okay? Play around with it. Okay, because we're going to be using these simulators to help understand the concepts before you guys go into shop. Okay, again, my goal is to get you guys into shop, but I do also have to try to make sure everybody understands these concepts. Okay, I am going to stop recording this, and we can...